Hello and welcome back. So in the previous class we looked at uh, the first law in the context of uh, perpetual motion machines of the first kind and then we sort of looked at the Kelvin, Planck and Clausius statements of the second law but we did not really discuss them. So we are going to look at them in detail now. So we looked at also what are called heat engines which take in heat and produce work. We saw that uh, a piston cylinder arrangement would be that kind of a heat engine but we said we would like to have heat engines which run on a cyclic process so that we can get out a lot of work from it and we also looked at what are called reverse heat engines or also heat pumps and one category of reverse heat engines is also refrigerators and where there we saw that the aim is essentially to give work and to transfer heat from a low temperature device to a high temperature device. So we are going to look at the Kelvin Planck and Clausius statements in the context of these. So the Kelvin Planck device uh, statement essentially uh, is applicable in the case of a heat engine. So it says it is impossible for a device operating in a thermodynamic cycle to produce work while having heat interaction with a single reservoir at any temperature. <coughs> so let us look at it again. So it says it is impossible for a device operating in a cycle. So this only uh, deals with devices which are operating in thermodynamic cycles not in devices which are just operating for in a process. So only for cyclic processes this is applicable. So it says it is impossible for this device operating in a thermodynamic cycle to produce work while having heat interaction with a single reservoir at any temperature. So what we saw earlier is that we were drawing heat engines of this kind. So we had some heat transferred from some high temperature reservoir to this engine and then we said typically it rejects heat to some low temperature reservoir and in this process we said we were I think calling this TL and QL and we said it produces work. So for this kind of a heat engine what the Kelvin Planck statement says is it is impossible to produce work when it is operating in a cycle where it has heat reservoir heat interaction only with a single reservoir. So what it says is if you remove this connection and you have a heat engine here and it produces work and it runs in a cycle this kind of an arrangement is not possible. <coughs> Supposing this was possible we would call that kind of an engine a perpetual motion machine of the second kind and this kind of a perpetual motion machine of the second kind would have an efficiency of 1 because efficiency for the heat engine we discussed is the work done the net work done which is what we want divided by the heat input which is QH. So in this case if we had a system of this kind so E is our system here the first law gives us delta U is Q minus W or delta E is Q minus W we do not have any potential and kinetic energies associated so the delta U is fine here. So if this was running in a cyclic process <coughs> we know that at the end of the cycle uh, any change in properties are 0. So this is 0. So Q minus W is 0 or Q equal to W. This is QH and this is W net. So then the efficiency would be essentially W net by QH and this would be 1. So what the second law in the Kelvin Planck statement says is that this is not possible. So if this is not possible then what is possible is the kind of figure we were drawing earlier where we have some high temperature reservoir we take some heat from it, we do some work and then we have some heat rejected. So the second law says this QL cannot be 0. So in this case what we essentially did is we said this QL is 0. The Kelvin Planck statement of the second law says that this QL cannot be 0. So if QL cannot be 0 then what we see is efficiency is W net by QH as before. But now the first law gives us delta U is equal to 0 is equal to essentially QH minus QL minus W net. QH is coming in is positive, QL is going out is negative. 
minus, minus w is going out which is positive. So, this is essentially what the first law says. <coughs> so, if we now find out the value of w net, so I take w to the other side. So, I get q h minus q l is equal to w net. So, this would be essentially q h minus q l divided by q h which is essentially 1 minus q l by q h. So, what we see is in the if this q l was 0 then we could have had an efficiency of 1, but now we have 1 minus something and q l is smaller than q h because the first law is like this. So, this is some factor less than 1, but it is since this is not 0 the efficiency will always be less than 1. So, the consequence of the Kelvin Planck statement is that it says you can never have a machine which is 100 percent efficient when you are operating in a cycle and you are trying to convert heat energy into work. So, that is essentially what this statement says. So, that is quite an interesting statement. So, what we saw is the first law says you cannot get energy from nothing, but you can convert energies from one form to another. The second law says that you can convert one form to another, but if you are trying to convert heat into work using a cyclic process, even that conversion is not completely possible. So, that is a consequence of this second law. So, another statement of the second law is essentially the Clausius statement, which is given in the context of a heat pump or a refrigerator. So, when we have a heat pump or a refrigerator, what we are trying to do generally is to transfer heat from a low temperature reservoir to a high temperature reservoir. So, what the Clausius statement says and we are trying to do this also in a cyclic process, this is what we call as reverse heat engine. <coughs> it is impossible for any device operating in a thermodynamic cycle to transfer heat from a low temperature region to a high temperature region without the help of work interaction from the surroundings. So, what it says is I cannot do this process, I cannot take heat from a low temperature and transfer to a high temperature unless I have work. So, the way I have drawn it here without any work, the second law says this is not possible. So, what is possible is a kind of device we had drawn earlier where I take the help of work from the surroundings. So, this is my system, this is essentially my reverse heat engine or a heat pump or a refrigerator. So, I will draw it as a reverse heat engine. So, what I want to do is take QL from here and transfer it on top. What the second law says in the form of the Clausius statement is that I need to have some amount of work which is done over here, otherwise this is not possible. So, the consequence of this is in COP. So, we see that COP is essentially the ratio of the amount of heat we transfer. So, for example, if we are talking of a refrigerator, we are interested in transferring this QL amount of heat. If you are talking of a heat pump, we are interested in transferring this QH amount of heat. So, the, the COP for a heat pump would be essentially QH which is what we want to transfer divided by the work which we need to give in order to transfer. So, if I had no work given here and I could do this process, then essentially work is 0 and this would be something by 0 which would be essentially infinity. So, my COP, the theoretical COP could be infinite if I had 0 work given, but what Clausius says is that you cannot do this. So, he says this work cannot be 0 which means now my COP is QH for the heat pump divided by work which is some non-zero value which means this is something divided by something which means it cannot be infinite. So, what the Clausius statement essentially puts a limit on is on the COP of a heat pump or a refrigerator. It says that the COP cannot be infinite because I need to do work in order to transfer energy from a low temperature to a high temperature. So, that is also an interesting thing, but this of course is for a cyclic process where I want to transfer uh, and I cannot do this without giving any work. <coughs> in the context of this, it is also interesting to see some numbers. 
uh, we are looking at COPs. We can look at COPs of say refrigerators. Uh, if you have seen a refrigerator usually or a air conditioner also, on the door you would possibly see some sticker with some number of stars written. These stars are linked to the COP in some average sense. Uh, what is also interesting is what the values of COP are in reality. So, for example, if the meaning of the stars have been changing in 2011, if you had a 1 star refrigerator, it meant that it had a COP lying in this range between 2.3 and 2.5 close to. The same in 2012 to 13 was a higher. So, it means you have been making our refrigerators better and better. So, in 2017 for example, a 1 star refrigerator had a COP in this range or the energy efficiency ratio which is sort of linked to the COP and a 5 star had a COP of the value of say uh, 3 or 3.5 or so. Uh, so, what we see is that the Clausius statement says that we cannot have a value of infinite. In reality, our values are not even close to infinity. We have we are much farther away from those. Anyway, that is just as a sort of a little bit of information, more of an aside. 